now is a needed time right now is a needed time now is a needed time now is a needed time right now is a needed time now is a needed time oh lord won't you come by here oh lord won't you come by here is a needed time. Oh Lord, don't you take too long, please Lord, don't you take too long, cause now is a needed time. I ask you now to prepare yourselves to receive the meditation and the prayers from the Holy Spirit. Make yourselves open and receptive and responsive. Open up your minds, open up your hearts to the divine energy of God's unconditional and pure love and profound wisdom. I ask for you to breathe in the light of God. Breathe it in, see it moving through your nostrils and into your body cavity. And just exhale out gently. Anything that is not of God. Breathe in the light of God. And know that this mighty breath is the energy of God that is moving in and through you as you. This breath is universal energy. It is available to all of us. And find yourself just relaxing and letting go. Allow yourself to feel the presence of God within you as you become more peaceful and calm. Prayer and meditation is a time for us to hear with our inner ears. And to see with our inner vision. Relax. Repeat to yourself, I surrender. I surrender into this magnificent light of God. I relax and I let go. Just allow yourself to be. Be present. Be mindful. Ask God for help. Ask the Holy Spirit to move through you as you. Blessing everyone that you come encounter with. Ask God to take the blinders off of you in areas of your life where you need to see more clearly.
so that you may see the truth. Affirm now that I am at one with you, God. Feel that presence. Feel that connection. I am at one with you. Just be. As we slowly come back and be aware of our bodies, tell God how grateful you are that you woke up this morning, that everything you need in life will be provided for you, that God is the healing energy within you. Be grateful that your body is automatically being restored and renewed and regenerated by the activity and the divine intelligence of God. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your hands, and allow yourself to come back and open your eyes. Welcome back, everybody. Today, the story that we're going to dive deep into metaphysically and how it affects us in our lives today out of the Bible is about how Jesus heals the man that was born blind. Born blind. Okay? Very interesting story. And let me share it with you. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. 
Can you imagine a healer doing that to you today? He'd be like, hey, hey, oh, hey, dude, what, what are we doing here? Did you wash your hands before you did this? Are you COVID free? I just had to throw that in there. It's not in the Bible, but it's a patty part. <laughs> Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Saloma. This word means scent. So the man went and washed, and he came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others says, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man that they called Jesus made some mud and put it in on my eyes. He told me to go to Saloma and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked. He said, I don't know. Isn't that profound? And this is probably one of the fifth major acts, healing miracles that Jesus did in the beginning of his ministry. And the question is, who sinned? Was it him or was it his parents? Nobody did. His mother didn't sin, his father didn't sin, and... The man did not sin. What happened was that Jesus also says that this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. So you know how we're all here for a reason and a purpose? This man was born blind so that Jesus could use him even though he wasn't conscious of it. But his soul knew that he was being born blind so that Jesus can demonstrate the power, the healing power of God. There was no karmic debt that this man was paying. He came in with a purpose to help Jesus and to teach other people to believe in God, to believe in miracles. Sometimes we ask, you know, why is this happening to me? And they say the best answer is, why not you? You know, we don't want to hear that, but it's true. Why not? You know, I, I know many of you have heard me tell the story about my mom with dementia. I went around saying, you know, I don't understand why this is happening. She's been a good woman all her life. She took care of kids. She ran a business. She dealt with my father. She took care of the neighborhood kids. You know, she was just a plain good woman. And I had to ask myself, if I say, I believe in what unity is teaching me, I have to ask myself, what is it that I need to learn from this? I was always praying that she would get out, would die, and be out of her pain. Until one day, the Lord said to me, she is not the one in pain, it is you. And that's what made me realize, I had to ask myself, what is it that I need to learn from this? What is it that I need to learn from this? And it wasn't until, you know, time after my mom passed that I, I realized she gave, her disease was one of the final gifts or one of the final lessons. Because I want you all to know, we're here to learn and we are here to teach. And nobody leaves this planet until all the lessons are taught that your soul needs to teach and all the lessons that your soul needs to learn. Then it's complete. Then you move on to the next level, because we really don't die. It's our bodies that die. It is not us. But that disease, you know, I didn't have the greatest relationship with my mom, but it helped me to forgive her more for the things that I thought, you know how we judge our moms. <laughs> Do I have to tell you? 
<laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So it gave me a deeper form of forgiveness and compassion and empathy that just went deeper within me. And then I also saw how her disease was opening up my spiritual gifts more before she died. Because I would have mystical experiences in my sleep where she appeared to me to tell me where she was going and what she was doing and how it was going to happen and all that stuff. And then there was another story. I know some of you have heard and some of you haven't. But these were profound experiences in my life that really shifted my spiritual perception. And what makes me see and understand this story so much better, and it was about an 18-year-old nonverbal autistic boy, man, young man. And I was doing some light energy, color light therapy on him, and um, and some energy work. And his mom was sitting at the at the head in, of um, the um, massage table, and the lights were going, and uh, and I was sitting at the side. And I've been blessed at times to have the gift of clear audio. I can hear things that are not my thoughts. And while he was laying on the bed, he had a beanie baby that he just would shake all the time when he was standing in that. And I noticed that the beanie baby began to slow down. And it's just, he was just ending up tapping it on himself. And then I heard him in my head. And he said, please tell my mother I don't mean to hit her. Please tell my mother that when I said I would help her learn lessons, I did not know that I was going to come back this way to help her learn her lessons. And I'm repeating it to his mother, and we're both crying. She's sobbing, and the tears are just coming down my face as I'm listening to him, clear audio in my head, tell me the story. He said, tell her I would have never picked this to help her out. So this woman was learning a lesson. So sometimes we come in with something because it's to help others understand the miraculous and the incredible unlimitedness of God. And for miracles to be performed. And the other is, is that we're doing this so other people can learn. This young man was the teacher. His disease of autism was the teacher. <clears throat> because why don't we go to the crucifixion of Jesus? Was he paying karma? Did he have some bad juju going? <laughs> I don't think so either. Did God say, well, you know, listen, son, I'm, I'm going to put you through hell right now just for the grins of it. No. Jesus had a sensation, a knowingness inside of him because he made a commitment to do God's will be done. Did he deserve to be persecuted? Did he deserve to be whipped? Did he deserve to die on the cross? It was not karma, folks. He said, I am the doorway. I am the door. I am the light of the world. 
He went through this experience so that we can learn about him, about his ministries, the teachings of the universe that he was teaching people through the divine energy of God moving in and through him. Isn't this an awesome story? So we have to ask ourselves, what, what's blinding us in our life? Is it our limited vision? Is it our poor me attitude? Look what's happening to me. Are we on the pity pot? Is it the lack of forgiveness? Why is this happening to me again? Because you didn't learn the lesson yet. I hate when a boy is fond of that. I really do. <laughs> I just go, again, God? <laughs> All right, let me get it this time. Full force. I just want to get this lesson out of my life. Done. Sealed. So I can share it and I can help other people with it. And that's what happens, folks. These stories, I didn't know that one day I'd be using them as a teaching tool. And there's so many other stories that, uh, that I've experienced that taught me more about God and about myself. Everything is for us to learn. We want to be that beacon of light. That's why we show up on church. That's why we pray. That's why we meditate. That's why we do spiritual readings. That's why we read self-improvement books. Because we don't want to carry the trash around anymore that has rocks in them. Do you? No. I don't. Get worn out. Yeah. <laughs> so this is an, an incredible story. So Jesus did not do anything. You know, he was stating the truth that would set us free. He, you know, he could have at that time in um, Gethsemane in the garden, he could have made it all those soldiers drop dead if he wanted. He could have cursed them like he cursed the tree and the tree, tree withered. <coughs> but he didn't. He was doing God's job. What kind of prejudices do we have? How's the judgment and the criticism? Those are blinders on us, folks. That's what keeps us blind to the truth that can set us free. That's what, when we live under a bushel of false evidence appearing real, how do we get our light to shine brighter? we got to let go of the stuff that's not working. Because God wants us to. God loves us so much. He wants us to be the biggest and brightest beacon of light in, in your neighborhood. Because the more that we let our light shine, the more we have an effect on the world. The more we shift in consciousness, we're all one. It helps the shifting of the world. Because we're connected. We don't think about it. That we, have, that we are that powerful. When we stretch and grow, we help the planet grow. But some of us going to, nah, you know, it's like Sierra says, well, what, what are you going to do? Just sit there and pray about it all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I am. <laughs> And, you know, and our mom wanted to get an alarm system on the house. And I said, why? Well, we need to be protected. And I go, I don't really think we need an alarm system on the house. Whatever I have here, they can take. Then I'll get something new, right? That's my, my thought. You know, I got insurance. That's why I pay insurance. Let's do it. So she goes, well, what are you going to do? You know, uh, renew your Pray More subscription yeah. as your security? Yeah, I am. Yeah. 
My life is funny. My life is funny. Bunch of comedians living in my house. But, you know, I just... Things are happening because we got to learn or we're, we're giving a lesson. You know, we, we can, you know, trauma and things happen in our life. And I'm not saying, oh, we should jump up. Ah! You know, we got to feel our feelings first. Because I want you to know that our feelings, first of all, are not facts. Second of all, our feelings help us fine tune our intuitive nature. Did you know that? Negative, positive. Because you know what you like, you know what you don't like, you know what makes you ecstatic, okay? But we do not have to hang on to the negative feelings, the things that blind us. I don't want to walk around. I mean, we all have our prejudices. I mean, you know, I really came to this realization, like I'm thinking to myself, Patty, who are you prejudice against? And I came to the conclusion that I'm just prejudiced against everybody. <laughs> they don't have to be of a certain race, a certain faith. Do you understand? From a different country. Because there's a lot of good people in every community, in every country, in every person, no matter what color their skin is, no matter what... You know what I get prejudiced about is the behavior. Doesn't that make sense? That was my big aha this week. It's behavior. And then I have to ask myself, am I upset? Because that behavior is in me. <laughs> it's a mere thing. Ooh, 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 ooh. That hurts, doesn't it? But then when I see good behavior, and I go, oh, wow, I really love that about you. You know what? I really love that about myself because I couldn't see it in you if I can't see it in myself. Or have an inclination that it's in there inside of me. I just want us to go out there and live good, happy lives. I want us to enjoy life. Don't you? That's what I think God wants us to do is to enjoy life and not to take ourselves so seriously and stop beating ourselves up. Sometimes we're just born blind because we need to learn a lesson. Just imagine the lesson that this man learned that was born blind, that anything is possible. And remember, it's always God who's doing the healing. It's always God who's giving you the illumination. It's always God who's giving you the understanding. It's always God that's making you feel loved. It's always God who's giving you profound wisdom. It's always God who's giving you enthusiasm and joy and laughter in your life. Why do we love so much when we hear a little kid laugh? It's contagious. You could be in a bad mood and you hear a child laughing. What happens? Yeah. You laugh. It ignites something in you. It's the same thing as we're growing up here as adults. We're all kids, but we're just bigger kids. <laughs> you know, let's, let's take the blinders off. Let's... Let's put them down. And, you know, and how do we do that? I want you to know that Hold on. how do we take our blinders off? Realizing that we're not always right and we're not always wrong in our lives by listening with the inner ears of God to feel with the heart of God. We have the inner vision. Let us look. Let's take the blinders off and say, God, show me the truth that's going to set me free. 
Show me the truth that's going to set me free. And that's how we take the blinders off. You know, you notice the race horses, they got the blinders so they don't see any but the other horses on the other side or any distractions. Well, sometimes just visually see yourself taking those blinders off yourself. Say, I want to see the light of you, God, here. I call forth the light of God in this situation. I call God to come out and be made manifest in you. I call forth the light of God and the truth of God to come forth from me into manifestation. Powerful stuff. My guides tell me I'm done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. And so it is.